Hi everyone! In honor of Valentine's Day, I wanted to make a video talking about my favorite couples from fantasy and science fiction. My only problem with that is that I am not a person that is generally drawn to romance in the things that I read. I looked at my favorite books from 2020 and I think none of them really had romance as a key important part of the plot. Some of them had romantic subplots and things like that. So I really had to look back at my favorites and see what I could think of, but I still wanted to do this video because we're coming up to Valentine's Day and I thought it would be a good time. I think I could probably also do a least favorite couples from fantasy and science fiction video. So if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments. Maybe that'll be for after Valentine's Day. In general, what I like to see either in a couple or in a romantic subplot is two strong characters who are independently working towards a goal. Either they have a shared goal or purpose, or they have their own things going on and their own goals, but they also have a really strong relationship. I really do not enjoy reading the sort of will they won't they plot or plots where there are stupid misunderstandings that make people somehow, you know, stop trusting each other for an entire book due to lack of communication. Another thing that I've noticed that I like in fiction, which obviously does not exist in the real world, is I do have a soft spot for romances or couples where one character is immortal or very long lived and the other one is just a regular mortal. I feel like maybe that came from Lord of the Rings or something else I read as a kid. I don't know, but I just do tend to get drawn to um, relationships with those kinds of discrepancies. Obviously, this isn't something that really applies to real life or, you know, what I think makes a good relationship in real life, but I think that I just, there's something about that that I like. And I think it might be because I just really like the trope of immortal characters in general, and those tend to be some of my favorite characters in stories, so maybe I, that's why I also like sometimes romances that have immortal characters. I'll start out by talking about relationships that I actually like and think I feel like are good couples. Obviously, I'm not billing myself as a relationship expert here, I'm just a reader, but you know, in, in terms of couples that I like to read about that I think seem like strong couples to me. I'll be mentioning a bunch of different authors and series. There may be some minor spoilers in here. I'll try not to do anything that is too horrible. But I'll also timestamp which books and authors I'm talking about, so if there's anything you particularly want to avoid, please just look at that and maybe skip ahead to other books. I did a video recently about the Vorkosigan saga, and I mentioned that the chronological first book in the series, Shards of Honor, which is about the relationship between Miles Vorkosigan's parents, that that is one of my favorite love stories of all time. And I think that Errol Vorkosigan and Cordelia Naismith really are one of my favorite couples. They only really have the spotlight in the first couple books in the series because most of the series is about their son. But especially in Shards of Honor, the first book, I really love the story of how they meet and get together. And this is not usually a plot that would um, draw me in a book, but in particular, I love this story. What I really like about Errol and Cordelia is that they are both career-minded, middle-aged characters. They're in their 30s and 40s, respectively. They have past failed relationships, and they happen to fall in love unexpectedly when they are thrown into a very intense life circumstance together where they're you know, forced to survive together for a couple of days. And they recognize that due to the circumstances and they're from different planets that are not really on friendly terms, they know that they can't be together and they separate and then they're thrown back together later on again and they are forced to separate. And eventually they do end up together, but throughout there is acknowledgement of very real circumstances that prevent them from really being in a relationship together. And it's not portrayed in any kind of melodramatic way. It's two people with actual goals and actual lives who acknowledge their feelings, but also have other things that they need to take care of. And eventually in the story, it hits a point where circumstances change and they are able to be together or they make certain decisions, but it's not, that is not really the principal conflict of the story, even though it's the story of how they meet and fall in love. I think I forgot to mention Shards of Honor is by Lois McMaster Bujold, who wrote the Vorkosigan Saga. And I'm gonna talk about one more couple from the Vorkosigan Saga that I really like. Probably my second favorite couple in the entire series is Miles and Ekaterin. Miles is of course the main character and he ends up meeting Ekaterin later on in the series after having a bunch of other romances and other intrigues. Miles is the son of Errol and Cordelia who I mentioned before. His relationship with Ekaterin is very very different than his parents' relationship obviously. He is a character who has struggled to find a partner that can really embrace 
everything about who he is because in his home planet he's very much discriminated against for his physical disabilities but then when he's out in the wider galactic universe he uh, has the problem where the women really like him but they are not so into Beriar, his planet, because it's seen as being kind of a provincial feudal backwater. So Katarin, when she meets Miles, is in a very abusive relationship and that's something that she has to overcome before they can end up being together. But Miles has this way of making everyone around him, whether it's someone who's in a relationship with him or just his friends or colleagues or subordinates, he tends to make people sort of more than what they were before they meet him. And some of it is just his sort of manic charisma, but some of it is this very genuine effect he has on people that helps them grow and live up to their potential. And that's something that he really brings out in her. Miles is very manipulative and very impatient and he almost tanks this entire relationship because he needs to learn to respect her agency. Even though he, unlike her previous relationship, he can really see who she is as a person and appreciates her not just you know, as a woman from a very traditional culture, but appreciates her interests and her potential. He still is just used to basically doing all sorts of things to the people around him that he cares about for their own good and he needs to learn a little bit to not do that with her and to respect her a little bit more. But while she can immediately see past some of her cultural biases to appreciate who he is and she likes him a lot, she first has a lot of issues from her previous relationship and she also has the desire to be her own person and she needs to figure out how to reconcile that with potentially being in a new relationship. So even though Miles tends to sort of dominate everything when he's in a scene or a book or even sometimes in books that he's not in, I feel like I still really like their relationship and I really enjoyed the books in which they build that relationship and get together. So as you can see from the bookshelf behind me, I'm definitely a huge Brandon Sanderson fan and there are a lot of couples in Brandon Sanderson I like Generally, romance is not a huge element of his books, which I also very much like, but in going into this video, I wanted to make sure I just didn't list a ton of couples that I like from Sanderson because I probably could list a lot, both minor and more significant, but I decided I did want to mention Finn and Eland because it's a couple that I used to, when I first read the Mistborn series, not like very much, but on my most recent reread last year, I actually overall really liked how this couple was portrayed. I did kind of find their relationship annoying in the first Mistborn book. It was a little more teenagery. I felt like Vin was too immediately head over heels over Eland and just, you know, didn't respond to a very mature way to a lot of the things that involved him. She was too willing to believe the best of him despite not really knowing him. You know, it was a little bit mixed up. But where I really connected to them as a couple was in the doubts and insecurities they're dealing with in book two because I felt like it was just something that I understood a lot better now that I'm older. Their relationship was still very young and very untested in the second book, but I felt like I could really understand where they were coming from. Both of them had these doubts about whether they were right for the other person, whether they were good enough for the other person, and just feeling kind of insecure in a new relationship. And even though it was kind of juvenile, I remember feeling that way, so I felt like I kind of understood where they were coming from. And then in book three, Hero of Ages, which is probably my least favorite book in the trilogy to some extent, I like the fact that they become a really strong, unified couple that really absolutely trust each other because of the things they've been through together. So. Overall, I think that Van and Eland are one of my favorite Sanderson couples. Another author that I think writes really good relationships, particularly really good marriages, is Mary Robinette Cole. Even in her first series, I forget the name of the series, but the first book was Shades of Milk and Honey, and I didn't really care for her first book at all, but the center of that series was a really strong marriage. And then in the Lady Astronaut series as well, I feel like a lot of the characters have really strong marriages. There's even one character I can think of who's kind of a jerk and kind of a little bit of an antagonist at times, and even he is actually a really good husband, it turns out. I don't want to guess too much, but I used to read Mary Robinette Cole's blog, and I do have the sense that her relationship with her husband is really a super strong one, and that they just have, you know, a really good relationship together, and I think that might be part of why this is something that she's really good at conveying, or also seems to feel like she really wants to put into a lot of her books, is these really strong marriages. The protagonist of the first two Lady Astronaut books, Elma, and her husband Nathaniel have this super rock-solid marriage that is just 
while it's not a major plot point in the book because they're married from the beginning and they just remain a really strong couple, it's still a core of who she is as a character and it's something that is just really sweet to read about because Nathaniel is just totally a rock star husband. He is just super supportive, super encouraging, always encourages her to pursue her dreams. And you know, it's not like it's a perfect marriage because there probably is no such thing, but honestly, he is just a really amazing partner and you just can't help but love him. And it's not like Alma isn't a good character or that she doesn't deserve her husband's loyalty, but especially in a book that starts out set in the 1950s, it's just really nice to see this kind of really good equal relationship. And then the narrator of the third book in this series, Nicole, also has a very strong marriage with her husband, Kenneth, even though it's a very different kind of marriage, because I would say both her and her husband, well, first of all, they've been married for quite a bit longer and they've gone through even more in terms of, I guess, grief and difficulties. Their bond is really tight, but their personal desires are a little bit at odds. At the same time, they're working for a very common goal in terms of what they want for humanity and the ways that they want to help people. But she wants to be an astronaut and he is a politician who also can't leave the earth because he has you know a heart condition or something like that so he's not going to be able to ever go into space and she wants to continue pursuing her dream career but she also is really good at being a politician's wife and is kind of torn between those duties to a certain extent. So I really like the way that Mary Robinette Cole portrays these characters and the way they have this really strong relationship even though there are things in their relationship that are just problematic and maybe are inherently not fixable. Another thing that I think has been with pretty much every one of her central couples is that they are all either child free by choice or not able to have children. I do remember reading a blog post from quite a while ago about how she and her husband decided not to have children. And I do think that it's interesting that she has so far made that choice in all of her main characters. They all are in slightly different scenarios, but it's something that all of them have dealt with in some way or another. And I think it's, you know, well, Maybe I would wish she would branch out a little bit more. I also think it's really important that that's something that she's representing. One more relationship I want to mention because I just think it's a really solid relationship that I really like is from the Devabad trilogy and that's Muntadir and Jamshid. I feel like their relationship is probably one of the healthier ones in the series, even though I think pretty much all the relationships in that trilogy have a certain level of issues, but what I really like about their relationship is the fact that they basically should be natural enemies and they've kind of overcome that before the series, but even so, like given the events that happen in the series, they should be pretty much pitted against each other in every way possible and they kind of refuse in the end to let that come between them and it's kind of a choice that in the series this entire generation almost kind of makes is to just really be done with all the nonsense from the past millennia and try to build the world that they want. But I just particularly like how these two characters, I kept expecting them to end up kind of at odds with each other because of things that were going on in the books. And of course, there were a lot of things that came in between them at certain times, but their actual relationship never really felt like it was in danger to me. And I really liked that because I kind of felt like S.A. Chakraborty was kind of pulling out all these tropes that would normally have characters being like, and now we can never be together. And just, they would kind of acknowledge you know what was going on but it didn't turn into this whole thing where they couldn't communicate or they weren't on the same page anymore even though really horrible things were happening. I also want to mention one more relationship from the Devabad trilogy which is sort of the opposite of all the relationships I've been talking about which overall I think are sort of healthy positive relationships and that is Dara and Nari from the Devabad trilogy because this is a relationship um, I could not help loving even though it was deeply problematic and intended to be deeply problematic but just I could feel my my inner teenage self would have just been all over this you know it had a lot of chemistry and romance and allure and you have the immortal or like at least long-lived guy and the young girl and she can totally fix him except probably she can't anyway I could just see all the things that I would have just been all over when I was younger and there's this little part of me that was still very drawn to that and I think that's the effect that we were supposed to be having as readers at least that was how I interpreted it 
But, you know, I don't want to totally spoil the entire series, but I'll just say, you know, overall, I was happy with how this series handled this relationship. But was there a part of me that is totally rooting for them from day one? Yeah, absolutely. I kind of can't help it. I'll just mention two more fictional relationships that I don't necessarily think are healthy or positive relationships, or at least you might not think they were if you saw them in the real world, but that just I really enjoyed reading the stories and the plots that went with them. The first one is from a series that I have not really talked about before because it's kind of a guilty pleasure series. And I also read it a really, really long time ago, but that's The Parasol Protectorate by Gail Carriger. This series is kind of a alternate history, Victorian steampunk paranormal romance, I guess is what I'd say. And the central couple really reminds me of another favorite couple of mine that is not from a fantasy series, and that's Amelia Peabody and her husband Emerson from a long-running mystery series by Elizabeth Peters, but I have a very, very strong feeling that Gail Carriger was uh, a big fan of Amelia Peabody because her two leads in the Parasol Protectorate are very, very similar in terms of temperament. So Alexia Terabody is an opinionated, outspoken, impatient spinster which again, you know, in Victorian England, not that old, but you know, she considers herself a spinster. She is a preternatural, which means apparently that she has no soul, but also when she touches supernatural creatures, they temporarily turn back human. So she's quite powerful and not really trusted in a society where supernatural creatures like vampires and werewolves are kind of part of mainstream aristocratic society. And then her love interest, Lord Connell McCon, is a blustering Scottish alpha werewolf. This is not a story that I would typically be drawn to, except the fact that it is so funny. I have realized recently, I know I come across probably as kind of a serious person a lot of the time, but I actually, some of my favorite books are just really funny books. And Gail Carriger is just the funniest writer. All the characters are hilarious. I love them all. The plots are honestly not that great, but just the books are so entertaining and I just really care about her characters. And I don't know, Again, this, this couple, they have a lot of the things that I said in the beginning of this video that I don't normally enjoy in romance. The first book is probably the most romance focused. It's totally a will they, won't they, where she is kind of oblivious to his interest and, you know, just keeps pushing him away. And then in the second book, there's totally a misunderstanding that like drives them apart for a whole book and all this stuff. But I just enjoy the heck out of this series. I think it's so much fun if you're the right kind of reader for it. Another relationship that I want to mention just because I thought it was kind of interesting is from the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. Again, this will have spoilers. I haven't been giving a spoiler warning on every single series. So sorry, hope you guys have been skipping the ones that you don't want to hear about right now. But I really thought the relationship between Vasya and Morosco was really interesting, the way it was developed, especially because there's not really even any hint of it in the first book. And he is a god, basically, and she's a young woman. And the way that throughout the series, he becomes increasingly mortal and human-like, and she becomes, you know, increasingly, she increasingly comes into her own power. And at the end, they are both kind of doing their own thing, but then they still end up coming together. I don't know, I just thought it was a really interesting portrayal. And just the way she deals with this relationship, I guess, I thought was very interesting. I thought the way Catherine Arden handled it is something that, I thought the way that Catherine Arden handled it really worked for me. If you told me on paper that these two characters would develop a romantic interest in each other, I would feel like that was kind of a weird thing, but I, I liked the way it was done. And again, here's another one where we have an immortal character and a mortal character. That, that was also in the Parasol Protectorate series. I guess that was kind of implied by we had the werewolf and the human, but I didn't mention it. So anyway, these are some fictional romances that I just liked reading about, even though I don't know if they are particularly realistic couples. So thanks so much for watching. Those are some fictional relationships that I could think of that are my favorites to read about. I'd love to know what you think of them, if you've read these books or what your favorites are. This was a really interesting one for me because it's not something I think about a lot and it's not something I usually am too drawn to in books. So let me know your thoughts and looking forward to hearing from you in the comments.